परिक्रमा को
Divas and Trinivasacharya had very deep connections with the Goswami. Uh, this is a very nice uh, pastime connected with the, the birth of Srinivasacharya. His father and mother were both very great devotees, actually. Father's name was Chaitanya Das. And it's described that previously, before, before he got the name Chaitanya Das, he had come to Katwa, where we're going later this morning. He had come to Katwa to see the sannyasa initiation of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And when, when he arrived in Katwa, he saw that the barber who had shaved the head of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the barber was greatly lamenting that he cut off the beautiful long hair of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And it, the, 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 the father of Srinivasi began to chant Chaitanya, Chaitanya, Chaitanya. Again and again he was chanting the name Chaitanya, 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 Chaitanya. So they gave him the name Chaitanya Das. Everybody called him Chaitanya Das. And then he got married and later on with his, his wife, his wife said to, the, to him, he said, she said, you know, I had a dream and in my dream Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to me and he told me we should have a child. So her husband, this Chaitanya Das, he said to his wife, are you sure? Did Chaitanya Mahaprabhu really come in your dream or are you just saying this to get a child? You know, sometimes, you know, the women, you know. <laughs> so, no, she said, no, really, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came in my dream and he ordered me. We should have a child and it will be a nice devotee, a great devotee. So, anyway, Chaitanya Das was not very convinced. They decided they would go to Puri. And they go to Puri and they could ask Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So it happened, they went to Puri, and when they got to Puri, they saw Lord Chaitanya was out there doing Harinam Sankirtan with all the devotees. And when he saw this Chaitanya Das with his wife, Mahaprabhu came over to them and spoke to them and welcomed them to Jagannath Puri. He said, yeah, I, was, he said, I, I knew you were coming. He said, you come and meet me later, I want to talk to you. And at that time, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told them, you should have a child. It will be very good because your child will be a great devotee and he will spread the mission of Lord Krishna, he will spread the message of Krishna throughout the country. So it happened, they had their child. And the child was given the name Srinivas. So what the, what, uh, one of the childhood pastimes is described that one day the father Chaitanya Das was crying. He was crying. And Srinivas came and said, Father, what's wrong? Why are you crying? He said, I'm crying because I have no love for Radha and Krishna. I have no love for Mahaprabhu. And hearing this, Srinivas also began to cry. And the two of them were crying. And then the wife came, the mother of Srinivas, she also came. And she said, what's wrong? And why, why, are, you, why are you both crying? And when they told her, then she also began to cry. So the three of them were all crying together, feeling the regret that they had no love for Radha and Krishna. They had no love for Mahaprabhu. So when Srinivas was about eight years old, 
it's bad. This is another different version because it's not so clear. You know, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we know about his childhood Leela because Murari Gupta kept a diary. But with Srinivas, we're more dependent on, uh, you know, what, what we find here. Different people have different versions. Anyway, it said when he was eight year old, in the version of which I came across, that a sannyasi came to visit their home. And Chaitanya Das naturally told the sannyasi, please tell me how I can serve you, whatever I can do to help you, I'll be very glad to do for you. And the sannyasi looked at Chaitanya Das and said, well, you know, I could tell you, but it will be very painful for you. But Chaitanya Das said, no, no, no. I'm willing, whatever you want, you just tell me whatever you want, I will give you. So Chaitanya Das was so persistent that, please, you're a sannyasi, it's my duty to serve you. How can I serve you? What can I do for you? So then the sannyasi said to Chaitanya Das, that, that son of yours, I need, a, I need an assistant to come I'm going to visit the holy places. I'll take your son with me. So when he said that, Chaitanya Das fainted. He just collapsed on the ground. But when he recovered, he understood. He said, Mahaprabhu gave us a child. Now Mahaprabhu is taking the child. So the child left with the sannyasi and went to visit the holy places. So in course of time, Srinivas was able to uh, go to Vrindavan and it was in Vrindavan at this time Jiva Goswami was there. Oh, oh there was another pastime which happened that Srinivas came to Vrindavan. The first time he came to Vrindavan, there was a crowd of people. And they were all doing kirtan and he didn't know what what is it what's happening what's the ceremony and they told him they said rupa goswami just departed from the world so he had actually come to vrindavan thinking that he would get the association of rupa goswami but rupa goswami had just departed when he got there earlier Srinivas had also had the blessings of Vishnu Priya. He'd gone to Mayapur and he'd got the blessings of Vishnu Priya that he should go to Jagannath Puri and learn Bhagavatam from Gadara Pandit. So he went to Jagannath Puri and when he got to Jagannath Puri he met Gadara Pandit and Gadara Pandit told him, well I will teach you Bhagavatam but my version of the Bhagavatam, you see, because when I read Bhagavatam, I cry so many tears from the eyes. And you know, the Bhagavatam in those days, it was all handwritten. It was handwritten on palm leaves. So all the ink was smudged. He said, I can't read it anymore because my tears have smudged all the ink. So you go to Navadvip. And then Navadvip, get somebody to write out Srimad Bhagavatam, come back, I will teach you Bhagavatam. So in this way Srinivas came to Mayapur on Navadvip, got a pandit to write out the Srimad Bhagavatam, and he came back to Puri, but by the time he came back to Puri, Gadakar pandit had left the world. So Gadarha Pandit had also do. Gadarha Pandit was so attached to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left the world. Srinivas never saw Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he came there to Puri after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had disappeared. So Gadarha was his heart was totally in feeling so much pain, it was so torn in separation from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because remember, Gadarhar is Srimati Radharani. So she's 
so much attached, she cannot bear the separation from Mahaprabhu. So, Gadarhan, he only stayed in the world, not, it was 11 months after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu departed and Gadarhan departed. Gadarhan couldn't remain without Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that he also finished his pastimes in the world and he returned to his eternal Leela in the spiritual world. So Srinivas was really having a difficult time to learn the Bhagavatam. Anyway, they told him, the devotees in Puri told him that Gadarhar, before he departed from the world, he left a message because he knew Srinivas was going to come back to Puri. So Gadarhar told uh, or rather the, the people there, they told that Gadar Pandit took said that you should go to Vrindavan. And in Vrindavan you will learn Bhagavatam from Jiva Goswami. So Srinivas went there to Vrindavan and he became one of the students in the school of Jiva Goswami. And there he met with Narata and Shamananda, or not, he wasn't called Shamananda at that time, he was still Duki Krishna. Later on his name was changed to Shamananda. It was Jiva Goswami who gave them the title, Narata Das Thakur. Srinivas became Srinivas Acharya. And Shamananda, he was given the name, not by Jiva Goswami, but by Radharani herself, he was given the name, that name Shamananda, although his name previously had been Duti Krishna Das. That's a whole incident, how uh, Duki Krishna Das's guru heard that his disciple's name had been changed. And he came to Vrindavan and was very angry at Jiva Goswami that I sent, G I sent Duki Krishna Das to you to study. You can't give him a new name. I already initiated him. The Jiva Goswami said, I didn't initiate him. He said, who initiated him? The Srimati Radharani personally. <laughs> so that was, that's a whole other pastime. We're talking about Shamananda. Uh, that's, that was Shamananda, but we're talking about Srinivas Acharya, this is his place. So Srinivas Acharya Naratam Das Thakur and Shamananda Pandit, they were all students in Jiva Goswami school. And it's described that, they, you notice, they didn't write too many books. Although Naratam wrote songs, Naratam wrote very beautiful Bengali songs. Just like we sing every morning, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu. So, so the last, the last verse, Ram, Daya Koro Sri Acharya, Daya Koro Sri Acharya, Prabhu Shiva, Ramachandra Sangamage Naratamda. So that song, Naratamda, he wrote the song, and he wrote simple Bengali language, but the meaning is always very, very deep. So he describes Daya Koro Sri Acharya Prabhu Srinivas. He was a very intimate friend with Srinivas Acharya and Ramachandra Kabiraj was also with them. So sometimes they would all be here. Sometimes Narata and Srinivas and Ramachandra Kaviraj. They were all here at this place because this was Srinivas Acharya's maternal relatives home. And he come to settle here. Srinivas, he was married, they came to Hasta, and he was living here with his wife. So, uh, but anyway, we're they went to Brin they were in Vrindavan and they were studying with Jiva Goswami and they learned everything. They were actually, they learned their philosophy, but they were very expert 
in Kirtan. They were actually trained in classical Indian music and they could sing very wonderfully. Naratam especially, Naratam style of Kirtan was very unbelievable. At Kituri Gram, when they had the first Gaur Purnima festival, Naratam would lead the Kirtan. So Srinivas as well, he was also very expert, wonderful Kirtaniya, could sing very, very wonderfully. And uh, they, so they were the top students there with Jiva Goswami. And Jiva Goswami, he had been residing in Vrindavan, and his uncle, Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami, they had departed. Jiva had become the head of the Goswami. And he was the one who bought the land for the Rasastala and everything. He did a lot of development there in Vrindavan for to, to observe all the holy places. So Jiva Goswami had all the writings of the Goswami and he knew that all the Bengali Vaishnavas are feeling separation. Mahaprabhu had finished all of his pastimes. He departed, gone back to the spiritual world. Gadarhar had departed. Swarup Damodar Goswami had departed. They'd all left. So the, the Bengali Vaishnavas were feeling helpless. That who is going to lead us? Who is going to guide us? You know, we were very fortunate when Prabhupada left the world. When Srila Prabhupada left the world on November the 14th, 1977, in the Krishna Balaram Mandir in Vrindavan, we also felt helpless that Prabhupada is gone. But then we began to remember his teachings, and then we began to study his books more and more. And we took shelter of Srila Prabhupada's teachings his recorded lectures and his letters and all of his books which are very very important for all of us so the bengali vaishnavas they didn't have that facility 500 years ago there was no zoom right there was no zoom to give class jiva goswamis in vrindavan he can give a Zoom class over to Bengal, to Jachi Gram. How to help all the Bengali Vaishnavas? So, Jiva Goswami decided he wanted to send all the books of the Goswamis over to Bengal. All the writings he had, for example, Lord Chaitanya's conversation with Ramananda Roy, which had been recorded by people like Krishna Das Kaviraj, Gos, Krishna das Kaviraj Goswami, they'd recorded these things. And then Jiva Goswami, he'd written his Sandarbhas. And Rupa Goswami, he'd written Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu and Upadesh Amrita, as well as his other books. So, Jiva Goswami arranged these three men, Srinivas Acharya. Naratam Das Thakur, Shamananda Pandit, that they will go to Bengal and they will bring all the books, copies, writings of all the books of the Goswamis and that will bring, that will rejuvenate, it will bring life to all the Bengali Vaishnavas when they read the books of the Goswamis, when they hear the teachings of Mahaprabhu because these, Goswami, these books, they were written on pe by people who had been personally taught by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Jiva Goswami arranged, he got big trunks, big metal trunks, and he had the books bound up to make sure they didn't get damaged or soiled in any way. He had them wrapped up in cloth and put in these big trunks. And they had bullet carts, very strong bulls to pull the carts because going to go all the way from Vrindavan all the way over to Navadvip and Mayapur. 
So Jiva Goswami uh, actually blessed them. And in Chaitanya Charitamrita, I was reading Chaitanya Charitamrita last night. There's one purport where Prabhupada says how Shri Srinivas Acharya, he went to Raghunath Das and he told Raghunath Das Goswami, he said, I'm going to Bengal. Jiva Goswami is sending me to Bengal to preach. So Raghunath Das embraced him. Raghunath Das was so pleased that you're going to Bengal to preach. He, he embraced Srinivas Acharya. And then, uh, so they had these, they, they were given also 15 men to go with them, just in case of any problems, you know, because if they're, they're just three holy men, three saints, so they have to have some people to protect them and keep people away like that. 15 men. So they were, they went. First they went to Mathura, then they went to Agra, then they went through Jarakanda, and they went through Jarakanda, and they were remembering how Mahaprabhu had been through Jarakanda, and they were feeling ecstasy. And then they came to this Vishnupur. This Vishnupur. Now in this Vishnupur, there was this one demon king. And this demon king, it was known that he would, he would rob travelers when they're coming through his kingdom. He would make a business of robbing them and often killing them, taking away everything they had. So, one of the spies for the king, he came to the king and he told the king, there's a party coming, they've got a bullet cart. And they've got three big trunks on their car. It's containing valuable, valuable jewels, diamonds, precious gems. So the king, you know, is very excited. Oh, wonderful. Oh, great. We have. So he ordered 200 men to go to, to, to rob them. They waited for the night. And the you know, Naratham and Shamananda and Srinivas, they were resting and the 15 men, they were a bit sleepy. <laughs> There's not much security arrangement, you know. And then the, these, these men, the, these 200 dacoits from the king, they come there and they just get the bulls and they lead the bulls away with the cart with the books on and and Narath, the men are 15 men are there they can do nothing because there's 200 of these other people with machines and weapons and they're just 15 people they can't do anything so they just took everything away and when Srinivas and Naratham and Shamananda understood everything had been stolen and they thought what are we going to do so they discussed among themselves and it was decided Naratam and Shamananda would go ahead and Srinivas would stay there in Vishnupur and he stayed there and try to find out, you know, maybe find out what happened, who are the people who got the books. So he was staying there and there was this one demon king, Birambir, Birambir, huh? yeah, right, Birambir, he was the name of the king. So he, this king had a palace and he would have, well first of all when he got the trunk, he opened the trunk, he was shocked. I thought, he thought, maybe some, somebody's cheated us. Somebody must have taken all the jewels and they put these books there. He didn't think that books were very valuable. He didn't know. He thought, thought something's wrong. We've been cheated. 
but he didn't know what to do. These books, just some books, he thought we were going to get jewels, valuable jewels. So I was called, the spies, the spies said, no, we understood they're very valuable, very valuable. We don't know what the books are, but certainly they're a treasure. Anyway, that king, he was having kata in his palace, and he had a court pundit speaking. So it happened that Srinivas was staying there, and he went one day when they had kata. He had, oh, they're having kata. Let me go in here. You know, just like, just like Srivas Pandit went to hear, uh, he went to hear, who was that? Devananda Pandit, thank you. Yeah, Devananda Pandit was having his Devananda Pandit was having Kata and Srivas went to hear. So to take me, Srinivas went to hear this court Pandit at Vishnupur. And when he heard, he thought, this is bogus. This man's nonsense. He's speaking all wrong philosophy. And Srinivas stood up and he spoke. And he explained everything. He explained everything. And everybody who was in the Qatar, including the king, they were all, wow, they were amazed. Who is this person? Who is this person that he knows so much? He's speaking so wonderfully, he's giving such a wonderful explanation of the Shastra. So this was Srinivas Acharya. And it was arranged, Srinivas would give Kata there. And it ended up the king became his disciple. And even the court pundit became his disciple. So when you get the help of the king, then it's very easy. And so then it happened that the, the king told them, he said, you know, he said, I've got these books. He said, maybe you'd like to look at them. And so he showed him the books. And then Srinivas Acharya told the king, he said, ah, these are our books. We were bringing these books. We have to take these books to Bengal to give to all the Bengali Vaishnavas. So in this way Srinivas got back the books and he was able to bring the books over here and bring life to all the Bengali people. So it was wonderful uh, that he was able to find the books again and reclaim them and he also made devotees by his preaching and he established that Vishnupur, they built temples and made many devotees there. So Srinivas Acharya was here with his uh, friends Narasam Das Thakur and Ramachandra Kaviraj. So there's one famous pastime which takes place here, which describes, you know, Srinivas and Naratam, Ramachar, sometimes they would sit in meditation. They would go into meditation and they would absorb their mind deeply in Krishna Lila. They could they had that ability that they could go they could actually enter into the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. They could sit in meditation and they would become so deeply absorbed, they would enter into the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. We, we should understand they are not ordinary conditioned souls, that these are very special souls who have come to take part in preaching Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission. <coughs> So like Srinivas Acharya, who is he in the spiritual world? Huh? Mani Manjari, right. The Manjari. Mani Manjari, right. So Manjaris. The Manjaris mean the young girls who are assisting the gopis. And the Manjaris, they're allowed to be with Radha and Krishna when Radha and Krishna are 
enjoying their conjugal pastimes. No gopis are there because the gopis are older and the gopis are, they're, they're, they're young women and if they see Radha and Krishna then they may become a little jealous. But the Manjaris, they're little girls. They don't know anything. So Radha and Krishna are enjoying and the Manjaris are there with them and they don't mind anything. They don't think anything. So Srinivas Acharya, he's one of these Manjaris. And Rupa Goswami, Rupa Goswami, he is Rupa Manjari, right? And Rupa Manjari, he's the leader of all the Manjari. So it happened one time Srinivas Acharya was sitting here in meditation and he entered deep into trance, into the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. And he was entranced for two or three days. They didn't know what had happened. And his wife was here and she was wondering. They were thinking, maybe he left the body. Because he was sitting in trance so long time. You know. But Ramachandra, was it Ramachandra Kaviraj Kim? Ramachandra Kim? And Ramachandra, he was a disciple of Srinivas Acharya. This Srinivas Acharya, he was a disciple of Gopal Bhatta Goswami. Gopal Bhatta Goswami, he was from South India, from Sri Rangam. His father had been priest there in Sri Rangam, a Sri Vaishnava family. And he came and he was, so he initiated Srinivas Acharya. And Srinivas Acharya, he had many disciples, and one of them was this very advanced devotee, Ramachandra Kaviraj. So Ramachandra Kaviraj came and he saw his guru in trance, and he told his wife, he told Srinivas Acharya's wife, no, no, he's, all, he, he's in meditation. And Ramachandra said, I will also go in meditation and find out what's happening. So Ramachandra also sat down and he was also very elevated devotee. He could enter into Radha and Krishna's pastime. And he found out, he saw this Srinivas Acharya is there in his spiritual form as Mani Manjari. And what's he doing? He's looking for Radharani's nose ring. That Radharani had lost her nose ring. They were having water pastimes and somehow her nose ring fell off in the water. So all the gopis, they were all looking, where is Radharani's nose ring? And Mani Manjari is there also, Srinivas is there, he's also looking. And then Ramachandra Kaviraj, he also comes and he's also Manjari in the spiritual world. So he was there when the two of them were together and they managed to find the nose ring. And when they found the nose ring, they're Manjaris. They don't immediately take it to Radharani. Because they're Manjaris. So, Mani Manjari gives the nose ring to Rupa Manjari. He's the leader of the Manjaris. And Rupa Manjari, he gives the nose ring to Lalita Saki. Lalita Gopi. And Lalita Gopi, she gives the nose ring to Radharani. You see how they respect the hierarchy? <laughs> this, the hierarchy is there in the spiritual world. So Radharani is so pleased to get back her nose ring. She wants, and she was chewing some pan. So she took some pan from her mouth and she gave it to Lalita Saki. Lalita Saki gave that pan to Rupa Manjari. Rupa Manjari gave that pan to Mani Manjari. And when Srinivas Acharya came back out of his trance, he had the pan wrapped in his dhoti. That's the pastime. So this is the 
this is something you can understand something of the, the greatness of these devotees Srinivas Acharya you know such a great personality wonderful personality so he was living here in this holy place so we come here we pray for his mercy please help us that we can continue to distribute the message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu all over the planet. Just as he did 500 years ago, he helped to distribute Mahaprabhu's message in Bengal. So we want to distribute Mahaprabhu's message now all over the planet. Okay, Srinivasacharya Prabhu ki. Srila Prabhupada ki. Gaur Premanande. Okay, any questions? I asked about that before. They told me many of the deities were given by the different kings who were living near here and they put them there, brought their deities here to be taken care of. And it came from different people. And uh, this temple was renovated recently. Bhaktivedanta Charity Trust donated a lot of money to help them renovate here. You can see there's a big plaque there on the wall. Maharaj, are you also going to tell us about the Dalphakur? Oh, the Dalphakur, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a kun there. You can see the lake there. So, they, you see, and they thought instead of going to Katuri Gram to have festival, we should have festival here in Jaji Gram. Why go to Katuri Gram to have festival? Let's have festival here. So, so many people came, they have to cook a big feast. They were cooking a big feast. And so they, you know, they didn't have the thermal pots which we have today. <laughs> So they, they put the dal there, they made this big lake there, that was the dal, they put the soup, the dal, it all went, it was there in that, so they call that the dal pakur. Now why is it water? And, and everybody would take the dal from the pakur, you could have a lot of dal, huh? you could imagine how many people must have been coming, they had such a big pakur, full of dal, that's uh, the, what I know about the place. Dal Pakur. Rajendra Prabhu had a question. Oh, and he's asking if, when he came from Vrindavan, was his pastimes around here? Yeah, yeah, he stayed all around here, different places. You know, just like Lord Nityananda also, Lord Nityananda was moving around. We hear also how Srinivas Acharya, he went on Parikrama, Srinivas and Naratam went on a Parikrama with Ishan, with Ishan described in the Bhakti Ratnakara. There's a book called Bhakti Ratnakara, where Srinivas Acharya and Naratam Das were taken on Parikrama in Navadvip, Mayapur by Ishan, Ishan Thakur, who was the servant in the home of Sachimata. Your language is that? Two wives, right? Yeah. Yeah, I heard that also. He had two wives. Yeah. Yes. I don't know, maybe one died, like back to you know, Thakur, his first wife died, so he married again. Actually, it was his disciples, they told him he should get married. They thought it would be better for him to be married. Stay firm. Oh, that's not Srinivasacharya, that's, Ram, that's the Ramachandra. He's asking that the, the Guru asked him, are you married or not? Srinivasacharya asked, told Ramachandra. Ramachandra. Srinivas asked Ramachandra, his disciple, 
It was Ramachandra, his disciple, right? And there's a story Maharaji was just telling us this morning when we were coming in the car, that how uh, Srinivas Acharya, he, Ramachandra had just got married, right? He just got married. And Naratam and Srinivas were seeing him go there, that he's, you know, he's got a rope around his neck or something. <laughs> And so that he heard the words, you know, he heard the words. And so Ramachandra come back. And, and so Srinivas asked him, are you married? And so he told him, he said, yeah, I'm married. I just got married. He said, then you should go back and be with your wife. He said, just got married. You go back and stay with your wife and then come back. Right? And so he went back to his wife and he went back to his wife and he preached Srimad Bhagavatam with them to her. You know, because he's been hearing from Srinivas, Srinivas had preached to him. And so Ramachandra went back to his wife and, and she asked him, what did you hear? What did he say to you? So he told her everything he had from Srinivas Acharya. He preached Srimad Bhagavatam to her. And so she told him, you better go back to your guru. <laughs> So he came back. He was here. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right, Prabhu. How are we doing? Any other questions? Thank you, Maharaj, for the lecture of this holy place. And now we'll have Prashant. And uh, while. You can have in the in the very small altar there are two paintings on either side of the deities. One is what Maharaj explained about past time of the Ramchandra Kaviraj going on a Bharat, you know, in a palaquin and getting off at the time. That painting is one side, and one side is the other painting is about the No Spring, where uh, both of them went in France and found the No Spring. That painting is also there. Please do have a look. Okay. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. So we'll have Prashadam now. Please sit around the place. Okay. Hare Krishna. Can असुविधा <laughs> 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 
ওটা কে এই সাইডে আছে নি আছে দিস সাইড প্রভু ইফ ইউ গো দিস সাইড এটা শ্রীনিবাস এটা প্রভু জি ফুল ফুল আই শেয়ার আই ওয়ান্ট দিস সাইড 